Hello and welcome back to another video. In this video, we are installing the hardest operating system known to mankind, which is Arch Linux, and we will be doing a manual install in an UEFI system. So, first things first, for this installation to work, your system must be an UEFI BIOS system or a system that is created in the past five years or something or a relatively modern system so don't try this method or i would not recommend try this method in a really old system that has still has a legacy bios which i have a video for that as well so i'll put it up in somewhere up here so you guys can use that video to install on those systems but this is for exclusively for uefi systems if you see a menu like this that means your system is a uefi system so that's something so first uh, we'll go on to the first menu right here now if you i'm assuming you have a bootable usb so i won't go over any of that there's like hundreds of video on my channel that show how to do bootable usb we don't need that and the first option will be auto selected if you don't select anything so let's just dive right into it so a nice tip to know is that if you do control l it will actually clear the terminal and we will need that because we have to clear the terminal a lot of times now the first thing is key mapping and since we will be typing a lot of commands uh, you need to have your correct uh, keyboard layouts or you will like we will mess up stuff so to change the keyboard layout what we can do is just type in load keys and the keyboard layout that you want to use. let's say if you want to use italian you can say it or since i'm using us we can do us now in case you don't know what your key is there's a really easy way to check so yeah obviously i mistyped it in the first try I have to type in an E here, local CTL, and there we go. So, in here, there's every type of keyboard layout, or at least those are supported in Arc, available. So, just go through them and check which one is yours. So, now we have to check our internet connection. And to do this, please use an Ethernet cable. Just first type in a P link, and if you see E0, that means your network interface is showing and it is working and please use an ethernet connection because so setting up a wi-fi can be a bit of an like hassle, like hassle on its own so if you are using a laptop for example then and if it has an ethernet port i would recommend just take your time and connect it with an ethernet port you will thank me later but in case you don't have an ethernet connection there is absolutely no way you can connect to it there is a tool in Arc which is IWCTL. Basically, like this is for Wi Fi, and you click and hit enter on this, and then to device list, it will show up. Like if you have the Wi Fi device, it will show which Wi Fi there is. And since we are not going through this route, I'm not like too much gonna show it. I'll link a video or an article that will show you how to set up your Wi-Fi in Arc. If you see me looking into the other monitor, I'm referring to the uh, Arc installation guide that they provide in the official website. I'll link that as well. So you can also check that and follow along with the video. So it will help you to kind of see the reference where I'm <laughs> like getting stuff from. Anyway, now that we have a network, we can check if our network is working by pinging it. So you can do ping arclinux.org. Now it can be any website, you can even do google.com, it doesn't matter. Just make sure you are seeing that 64 bytes, so it's receiving some stuff, so that means it's uploading and receiving data. And to stop this, we can do control C, and that will stop. Basically any running command will be stopped by control C. It's like the, and like the great wall of commands. Anyway, we can do control L again, and to clear the terminal. Now it comes to the part where we have to partition our drive in order to install our arc. Now in the like Arc Wiki, they recommend using FTX, but I do not recommend using it. It's a bit of a hassle. The first time I tried to do this, I used FTX and I literally had to whip out a calculator. So for this, we'll be using CFTX, which is a bit more friendly. 
where it will kind of give you a GUI where you can see what you are doing. So if I do that, and uh, you may not get this menu, but if you do get this menu, then uh, select GPT, because we are using uh, the a UFI system, which will basically use the GPT partition. So it enter, and then uh, you may not have free space right here, which I do have. If you have free space, then that's good. But if you don't, uh, let me just quickly set up something. So basically, you will kind of have like some partitions here, and it will it will be like some other type. It will say type DOS or something like the Windows partition if you had it. So if it shows it like this, all you have to do is just go to the drive and delete it. Just hit delete and it will delete the partition, go up, like use the arrow keys to navigate. This is basically just hitting up arrow, down arrow, that's pressing up and down, hitting left and right to move to the menu. So hit delete, press up, delete, and now we have back to the free space. And in this free space, we will be doing three partitions. One will be our boot part or EF EFI partition. That's really hard to say, by the way. So now you have to new. Uh, I want to do uh, 300 megabytes. So 300, it, it, you can do it 100, 300, one gigabytes, but one gigabytes is like overkill. So uh, like you can do it, but for this installation, I don't think we need that much. I hit enter now we have a 300 megabyte partition then we need our 4 gigabyte partition now this will be our swap and what is swap so swap is basically kind of like an extension to your drive which is acts like a memory when your system memory gets full so if you're doing something that fills up the system memory it can dump our stuff in the to the swap memory so your system doesn't crash because if you don't have this, there is a really high likely that you, your system will crash if your memory is full. Now with the remaining space, we can just hit new and then hit enter and this will create a partition with everything else we have. Now that we are set up and make sure and double check if you've done everything correctly. Now the order of this doesn't matter that much, but doing this in order will help you keep track of what is what. Now we are done this, we can do right and it will ask if we are sure and also make sure that it's done correctly and then hit yes. So we can type it in yes, hit enter and the partition doesn't have is an alter. Now we haven't formatted this partition, they are just created, we'll do that in the terminal. So now we can just do quit, almost deleted something there. Now we can just hit control L. So after doing our partitions, we can type in lsblk then hit enter and as you can see all of our drives are created and then we have to format all of them and in here you can see it says sda sda1 sda2 sda3 so sda is the main drive so if you have multiple hard drives or ssds then it will say sda sda sdb or uh, depending on your hard drive it will say a different thing and just make sure you're checking it correctly. But now we can actually format our partitions. So the first one is our EFI partition. Let's just get that out of the way. First of all, it and the EFI partition has to be in FAT32 format. So to do that, we can do makefs dot fat dash oops, dash f. So capitalize the F32. So we want to do FAT32 and then slash dev slash SD1. Oh, sorry, SDA1. So after you did that, hit enter. And it just created a FAT32 file system. And then we have our swap to do the swap. I mean, I'm just going in order. You can do it in any order you want. So to make the swap, all you have to do is just type in mk swap and then hit the drive name. So slash dev slash sda2. So the dev won't change, just the drive number will change. Enter. And there we go. We have our swap. Now as for the root, the root uses 
the ext4 format so mkfs dot ext4 and then again slash what the heck slash dev slash sda3 so after you do this you can see i misstepped it i did a ts my bad just make sure you type your commands correctly and there we go now we have our drives set up so everything is formatted correctly now we can move on to the next step so let me just clear this out the next step is mounting everything so the first one was sda1 which was our efi partition and the efi goes to slash <coughs> boot slash efi which does not exist yet so we have to create the file first then we can mount it so to create it we can do mktir slash slash p and then slash p and then we have to do slash dev sorry slash mnt slash boot slash efi so this is the directory we need we hit enter and the slash p basically tells it to uh, go through every directory that needs to be created and create everything so it will get all the drives now to mount it it's really simple to mount stuff so you can do mount slash dev slash sda3 so sda1 this is our efi system it's really late here so sda <coughs> so mount sda1 and then slash that drive we just created so mnt slash boot slash efi that mounted our boot drive now we have to mount our root partition we can do mount slash dev slash sda3 3 is our root so slash mnt and there we go enter now finally we have the swap and to do the swap it's really easy we can just do swap on why can't i type today swap on slash dev slash sda2 there we go so that's basically it so this is how we kind of mount everything together and now we are ready to actually install the system now from at this point we are like set up we have our partition set up we have our like everything mounted up now we have to set actually install our system to do it first we have to install it so in the arc linux uh, installation guide right here we can see that we have to, all you have to do is just say backstrap what the heck backstrap slash, slash mnt so it will install everything in the uh, mnt folder which is basically our mounted root so everything is installed in our root now we can do linux so the first thing is base it doesn't matter the order you put it in just everything should be there and it is recommended that you type in everything that is listed here then it, it will be much nice so you can do linux and then what is it linux firmware So that was about it, yeah. And then it says that if we have audio drivers or so audio devices, we can use SOF dash firmware. So I'll get that. Now we can do if you want to use the R, which is the best feature of which is the best feature of using R is the R repository. You need base and dash. Stable. no spaces stable and we need a few things we need the grub for the bootloader we need efi boot mgr 
and then nano and then network manage so this is everything we need so if i hit enter there we go it should get everything and install it so this will highly depend on your internet speed your internet, if your internet speed is really fast this won't take much long time but if it's slow it will take a bit of time so just hang in there i'll be back after this is done with this work now with all of that done now we can do is gen press tab slash mnt enter and here we can check if everything is in order and everything is the way it should be so the first we can see that sda3 is root and it's 64 so that's correct sda1 is slash boot slash efi so that's also correct and then we have the sda2 which is swap which is also correct now everything is in order now if for some reason you don't have this exactly the way it is or if you are missing something then just check with what you are missing then you can just unmount and re try to unmount and remount it uh, just to make sure that everything is working to unmount you can just you do u mount so basically the same command just use u mount and then slash dev slash like let's say it's tier one so if you do that then it will just unmount it and then you can just remount it also check what error you're getting so again make sure you're checking everything now after we check that this is correct now we have to put it in a file so what we can do is do gen so the same command you can press up to go to the previous command that you already pressed so that's convenient and then after this we have to put it so you can do greater than two of them two we have to put this in slash so you can put this slash mnt slash which is three slash hc slash f stab and then there we go and just to make sure that it worked we can do cat the heck is up with it slash mnt slash hc slash f stab and then it shows that everything is in that file so after this is done now we are finally ready to, we are finally ready to put into or log or get into our original root so to do that we can do arch dash ch root so this is basically arch change root to slash mnt and there we go now as you can see it says root at arch so so it, the color is gone the, that means that we are in the ba base bash terminal and we are in our system now in here there is a few things we have to configure now so the basic like installation is done. The system is now installed. Now we have to configure everything and add a bootloader, add passwords, users, and then we are ready to move on. So now we can. Now the first thing is our type. So we have to fix our type. To fix it, we can do ln dash s f and then dash use oh sorry not let's see that user slash share slash zone info slash so now in here is a region so whichever region you're from asia and dhaka so that's basically it and then the next one is hc slash local time local time there we go and after that if we do that we can see the time let me check if the time is correct 729 yeah it's correct 
So now we can move on to the next. <laughs> anyway, now we have to sync the clock. So we have to do ACW clock and then dash dash sys do doh. This will sync the clocks of our system. Now here comes a bit of a confusing part. So where most people get confused on what the heck they are doing. So remember how we install nano. Now that will come in handy a lot. So now we have to first change our local gen file. So which is nano slash sc slash local dot what the heck Your dot gen misspelled it. Wonder it's not working. It's really difficult to spell. So as is a local dot gen, this is what we want to change. And if you hit enter, you can see there's a lot of things here. And the only thing we're interested in the language that you want to use. So whichever language we select here will be the default system language. And yes, you can change it like afterwards. It's not like set it and die it. <laughs> it's not like that. You can change it afterwards, but it gets a bit finicky. So make sure you select the language you absolutely want. So I want n.us. So I'll go to here, delete the hashtag. So you can do it like go before and then delete it. Or you can just go before and delete it. It doesn't matter how you do it. But after you delete the hashtag, you just do control S. So save it and then control X. So move out. Then we can just Control L, clear it out, and we have to just generate the files now. So local dash gen, and this will generate our local files. And as you can see, it says n underscore us as utv done. So it's generating locals for that things. Now we have to add a local dot config file, which is well a conf file, which is basically some application will not look into the gen file, but rather look into the config file. So we need that so we can do, we can almost do basically the same command, just change this to conf. And that's about it. And then hit enter. And in here, just type it exactly, capitalize lang or L-A-N-G equal. And then just type in the one we just uncommented. So N underscore US fully capitalized dot UTF dash eight and then that's about it so this is the part this is the thing we have to type in you can do control o hit enter and then hit control x and that should be it that's for our local file now we have to type, set our key maps now a key map is basically your keyboard layout so which keyboard layout you're using so by default i am using the us one so it doesn't really like apply because it is set by default so by default arc is set to the english one so that's that isn't that much of an issue but just for formalities i'll show you how to change it so after you create the file we can do key maps equal Make sure you capitalize key maps all the way. And then since I'm using US, just type in US. And then we can, if you want to do Italian, you can do IT. So whichever one you're using, just make sure you give that one. So it's Control S or Control O, whichever you prefer. Control X and there we go, we're out. Now we have to select our host name. Our host name is basically, basically your system's name. So what will the, like system be recognized as it. it's basically the same thing just to host name so at least all of these are in etsy file or etc file i would like to say it and then hit enter and it doesn't have an extension to just host name and then call it something i'll just call it archie drawn so you can call it whatever you want hit uh, control o control enter control x and then clear it out there we go now we are the basic like setup is done 
now we have to set password for our root we can do passwd and since we're using the system as root we don't have to like explicitly say it but if you just do passw we can just type in a password make sure you use a strong password for this i'll just type in something simple there we go password update is successfully make sure you do it as secure as possible now we don't want to use root because that's a really bad habit do not use uh, the root as a user you have to set up or we should set up a user to add a user all you have to do is just type in user add and then dash m so you want to make a home dash g we want to add it to uh we want to add it to a group and the group will be called wheel because you'll see in a, in a moment <laughs> it's, it's a bit convenient that's all wheel and then dash s and then slash so the s is basically saying which shell we want to use we want to use bash for now and then tarzo. so this is the default bash the default terminal basically for and the username is tarzo so you can put whatever you want in place of this so whatever your username will be and then hit enter now that created the user now i have to set a password for it and the process is basically the same just to pass w and then hit Tarzo, and that will be our password setup so the username password and the username enter and then set a password and make sure this is different from your root password so just make sure it's different because you don't want like anybody hacking into your root when they have your user password and then now we have to add it so we can use sudo command but for now it actually cannot use sudo command you may think it should be easy but look at this if i do sudo like into my user and then if i just type in sudo pacman sy which basically updates the system and then it will ask for my password i give my password and it says sudo like so it's not the sudo file so that means that we are not like recognized as a sudo user so we can just do control e we can just exit out of here now to edit it so to edit the sudo folder all you have to do is just do editor we call nano so this is basically saying that the editor will be nano and we want to use vi so we want to edit vi sudo so if i hit enter now you can see top it says sudo file and then the scroll down here i think it's a, oh yeah almost on the bottom of the file and go to this line right here that says percentage wheel all because all so basically any user that's added to the wheel group will be added as an sudo user now we just set control o control x or you can do control s it doesn't really matter that much and then we can just clear this out and now we are able to use sudo user we can do that and if i just type in the same commands and then do sort and as you can see it can now run sudo commands so there we go now we just exit out so now we can just clear it so we just clear the terminal and we have to like enable network manager first. so we can do system ctl enable network so capitalize the n and the m there we go and then if i hit enter oops <laughs> i typed it wrong and this is bad so just type in system ctl no system ctl and there you go now it's enabled 
just clear it out and then if you have a display manager you can just type it in you can just do gdm or light dm or like whatever you're using sddm so you can enable it right here but since i'll show you how to like install a desktop environment a bit later so we'll just enable it then so we don't have to worry so we don't have to worry too much about it now we have to install our bootloader which is which will be grub so remember how we like got grub at a little bit earlier so that will come in handy all we have to type is just grub dash install and as you can see uh, sorry so grab install and then the drive we want to install it on so devs at sda so this won't be any partition it's just specific drive so if uh, like i said before that the sda is your drive so if you are having sda sdb sdc so whichever your drive is make sure you type that as the grub and also make sure that the uh, install where the like grub is installed so that's the place where your os is installed so hit enter and it just installed grub now we have to just make the config file and we are we will be ready to reboot so all you have to do is grub mk config and then dash o which will output it to slash boot slash grub slash grub dot config so cfg and then hit enter and there you go so we are not so if you see this line right here which says grub disable os prober so don't worry about it too much this is basically just uh, because we are not dual booting it so if we had os prober it will add uh, multiple systems to the list so we are not doing that we are doing a clean install so after that is done we can do what we can do is basically just get out of this so we can do exit and now we are in the installation iso as you can see the colorful text and we can do u mount dash a which will basically unmount everything that is not busy so there you go it unmounted everything that is not busy and now we should be able to do a reboot there we go now we just wait as you can see it really fast so uh, if this menu pops up that means you did everything correctly and nothing went wrong and if it doesn't just rewind the video and do everything from the beginning in case you missed a step so just hit enter and just wait and there we go as you can see architron login we just have to log into our user so just just do your username then our password there you go now we are logged in to our Arc Linux system now in here we want to install a desktop environment i will do kde plasma although i do like sfc or gnome gnome is a bit heavy and kde has a really a lot of customization so if you're into that then kde is a good place to go so you can do sudo pacman dash s and do plasma so this is the desktop environment then we do sddm which is the desktop manager the display manager and then we need a terminal although all, or else we can't do any commands once we uh, get into the system we'll be stuck there we need a text editor we can do kate and also a browser so we can do firefox now you can do any other like a package that you would like to install or you do enjoy using you can add it here but i would recommend not doing that much here just if you are doing a desktop environment you can do it from there so that would be much better so after this is done just hit enter and then give me my password and then i'll just keep everything as default so that it should work just fine and it's a hefty install so 
yeah just and just hit enter that is the why is selected and again this will also depend on how fast your internet is so i'll see you guys after it's done installing well that took its sweet time <laughs> to completing and now that everything is installed uh, all you have to do is just enable it and that's fairly simple all you have to do is to do let me just clear this so you guys can see properly So sudo, no, so not quite. So all we have to type in now is sudo uh, systemctl enable stdm. So that's the display manager we use. Now if I just do it like this, it will just uh, create it so we can it enables it when it uh, it enables itself at boot. But we want to enable it now. And we can see it just by doing test dash now. And then if I hit enter, there we go. We are into the desktop environment. We just give in our password. And we made it into the desktop. And if you like the video, if you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe.